Hey, what's up everyone? In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to interface the ADS 1115 ADC, that is analog digital converter to the Raspberry Pi to begin measuring analog signals. Now, the reason we want to do this sort of thing is because many sensors in this space only offer analog signal outputs and many Raspberry Pi models do not offer a built-in ADC to convert the signal to digital. That is a format the Raspberry Pi can understand and show us in Python. Thus, thankfully, we have a very cheap module, as you know, which you could see here, which is called the ADS 1115 module, and it acts as a middleman between the device we want to measure signals from and the Raspberry Pi, converting the signal for us to an output the Raspberry Pi can interpret and we can use in our experiments. We'll be using the MQ-135 gas detector for our example today that shows us the concentration of volatile compounds like alcohol and other gases in the atmosphere. It's just a very popular sensor and provides us with a good analog output to test with today's example. But really you can use any analog signal sensor you would like for your use case if you're following along with this tutorial. Now, by the end of the video, you will have an understanding of how to connect the ADS 1115 with a sensor and retrieve values with the Raspberry Pi in Python. So I do not want to waste any of your time, guys. Let's jump into it. But before we get into the content for today's video, everyone, I just want to gently remind you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't, because chances are, if you're watching this right now, there is more than a 90% probability that you are not subscribed to this YouTube channel. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button because it's with your support and subscriptions that allow me to make more engaging content for the IoT community. So let me stop nagging you guys today and let's jump back into the tutorial. Okay, so first things first, we just want to have our physical components in order. You can see I have a wiring diagram here. So your setup should follow something pretty similar to what I have going on here, except maybe if you have a different sensor, it'll be a little different. So we have in the center there is we have the ADS module. So we need four jumper wires to actually connect the ADS to the Raspberry Pi. So I'll go over them briefly here. So we just have the power pin on the ADS you could see in red, connected to the 3.3 volt pin on the Raspberry Pi, followed by ground, connected to the ground pin on the Raspberry Pi. And then we have the SCL and SDA pins, characteristic of I2C communication, which is a very common communication protocol used in this space. You'll be hearing that a lot if you're a beginner. And we need two pins for that on the SCL and SDA pins, connected to the SCL and SDA pins respectively on the Raspberry Pi. So once we have that next, we just want to set up our sensor that we're taking measurements from. So in the sensor, the MQ-135, we're only using three jumper wires. So the first one is the power pin there. And we're actually connecting that to a different power source or voltage same power source, different voltage, except it's the five volt pin on the Raspberry Pi, so it's to the right there. So don't get it mixed up with the, the red one, which is to the left. We're connecting it to the five volt pin, which is on the right, the top right on the Raspberry Pi. Now we have the ground, which is actually connected to the same ground, so that is convenient. And finally on the right, we have the analog output of the MQ-135. So if you are using a different sensor, just find the analog output. And then you just want to take that analog output and connect it to the A0 pin on the ADS. Now notice here, we actually have four analog pins on the ADS. So that's pretty cool. We can actually connect to four devices at the same time and measure their analog output. We're just doing one today and we're just connecting to the first one that is A0. So once you have all this and the Raspberry Pi is plugged in, let's jump into the code side and library side of things to show you how to get set up there. Okay, so now that we have our physical setup all good, let's go ahead and log into our Raspberry Pi and open a terminal. Now, you may be a little alarmed if you are a beginner, you see that my, my UI is a little different. This is just because I'm using Visual Studio Code connected from my local computer to my Raspberry Pi. You do not have to do this. There are tutorials online to show you how to do this. If you're interested, really, you can just open your Raspberry Pi and go to the top left and open a terminal. And essentially, we'll be doing the same thing. We're just running commands through the command line to be able to install some packages and configure some properties on our Raspberry Pi. So once you are in a terminal window, there are certain commands we'd like to run right now. So the first one is we actually have to enable I squared C if you've never done that before. So I'm just going to go up to the commands I've, I've run in the past. And so the first command is sudo raspi config. This allows us to enable I squared C communication. So you just wanna go down here to three interface options, go to I squared C, enable that, click yes, and then it's enabled. And then we just want to go to finish. So I just clicked right on the keyboard to get to that finish option and click enter again. Now typically what you wanna do after this, if this is your first time, you want to reboot the Raspberry Pi to make sure I squared C is enabled. I already had this enabled before the video, so I do not have to reboot right now. Next thing we want to do is we just want to update our Raspberry Pi because that is good practice to do before we do any project. So just run these two commands, sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. If you haven't run this commands in a while, it will take more than a few minutes to actually run. So just be patient and let it run. Once again, I ran this before the video, so I'm good to go here. Just trying to save you guys a little bit of time. And now that we have that, 
The next thing we want to do is we actually want to install these packages here. So let's go ahead, let's go up. Now, one thing I want to do is actually I want to find this command that I ran earlier. So let me just go to history of my commands and just search and just search pip. So we just want to pip install or sudo apt install python3 pip. So this is the next command we'd like to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. So yeah, if you haven't ever worked the Raspberry Pi before, you actually have to install something called pip. So pip is the Python package installer. So if you haven't ever touched this device, make sure you install pip and get that going. Chances are you probably already have this if you've been working with the device for a long time. So go ahead and run this. Once again, I will skip over this command. And once you have pip, we can actually pip install the packages we need for the, the code that we have, which is behind this terminal window. So I'll show you that in a second here. But the packages we need are these two packages by Adafruit. So Adafruit's a great company that makes uh, great code and packages and devices for the Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and just IOZ community in general. So we're just gonna install these two packages. I already installed them. Just click enter, it is quick. So that that's, it should take a bit if it's your first time. Depends on your internet connection. So mine are installed now, so that's cool. And another command we'd like to run here, so let me go ahead and clear this window, is I just wanna show you for a sanity check that we are connected to our device. So there's actually a tool we can install called I2C tool. So go ahead and run this command to actually install this, this package. And it will show us if our device is connected through I2C to our Raspberry Pi. So I already clicked enter here. Once again, I'm skipping over that. So if you have that installed, you should be able to run this next command, which is I2C detect slash Y1. And if everything's properly, you should see that a device is connected there. So we are good to go in terms of the packages. We have I2C enabled, we have pip, we installed the pip packages, and we confirmed via this tool right here that our device is connected via I2C. So let's jump into this code, go over it briefly, and show you what's going on. Okay, so now that we have our libraries and everything set up on terms of the Raspberry Pi configuration, next thing is we just want to create a Python file on our device. Now I'm using Visual Studio Code and I already have a Python file. Really, you can use any editor you want, Thonny or whatever comes on the Raspberry Pi, and just go ahead and create a .py file and name it as you wish. So really simple code here. So we have this time library to measure time between intervals. So we're just taking a measurement every second. You can go ahead and play around with this as you please for your application. Then we have board and busio. So this allows us to create an I2C object to allow us to communicate with the ADS. So that is also very important. And then we have the Adafruit library, which is probably the most important aspect of this code that actually allows us to create an ADS object from the I2C object and to actually have some methods on this object. So the method we're going to call is this analog in, and this will allow us to measure the analog in from the, from the MQ135 today, and to be able to print it on the screen in terms of a voltage. Now, another important parameter that we're not gonna get into too much in this video is that we actually have the gain set as one. So a gain set of one is typically enough for a lot of sensors. However, if you do have sensors that have a very weak signal or voltage output, you typically want to increase the gain. Once again, we're not gonna get into too much of the gain, but you can have a gain of up to 16 with this programmable gain amplifier on the ADS. So now that we have all this, we should be able to print the voltages on the screen, and those voltages should be indicative of an increase of volatile compounds in the atmosphere for this sensor. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So let's go ahead and run this code. Now I'm just running it through the command line. Really, if you're using Thani, there's probably a play button, you can just run the code, but I'm using the CMD to run the code. Either way is the same. So we are getting voltage values, so really low right now. So that probably means there's no stimulus on the sensor, which makes sense. It's just in my, my room here with nothing around it. Now I just want to test that the sensor is working as expected. So I want to put it above a bottle of alcohol. So this is a compound, a volatile compound that this sensor can measure. So if I put it above, what should happen, the behavior is the voltage should increase accordingly. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I put it above this alcohol bottle, isopropyl alcohol and it looks like it did increase. Now, if I put it away, it should go ahead and decrease. So hopefully you can do some simple test with your sensor to see the voltage value is changing as expected. 
So that pretty much sums it up for the tutorial, everyone. I hope you got your ADS working as expected and you got voltages showing on the screen that are indicative of some properties that you are trying to measure with your analog output sensor. Now, typically with these kinds of sensors, there's a lot of calibration you have to do to actually change that voltage to an actual value that makes sense. So with our MQ135, we'd probably have to go through a very lengthy calibration process to extrapolate those voltages to actual uh, compounds in the atmosphere that is measurable amounts of alcohol or whatever we're trying to measure in our environment. Now, whatever sense you have, it is going to be a little different. And I leave that up to you to do the research to be able to gauge that calibration process for your experience. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and also let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or if you have any questions, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you all for watching.